Hi, this is Dr. Tai from Premier Orthodontics, and in this video we're going to be talking about jaw surgery and braces. We'll explain why some patients need jaw surgery, how it works, and hopefully answer any questions you may have. We'll show you actual before and after photos of patients who had jaw surgery, so let's get started. So a quick reminder, we release videos about braces and Invisalign each week. So if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and tap the bell for notifications when we release new videos. So braces or Invisalign help to correct the alignment of teeth and jaw surgery or orthognathic surgery helps to correct misalignment of the jaw bones. Braces or Invisalign on their own generally don't have much effect on the jaw structure or your facial appearance, but orthognathic surgery can help to improve your profile and facial appearance. So jaw surgery is usually done in combination with braces or Invisalign or some other orthodontic procedure. Jaw surgery and braces are a great option for patients who have significant bite problems that may not be able to be fixed with the orthodontics alone. So orthognathic surgery may help to correct functional bite problems that make biting and chewing difficult or painful, improve swallowing and speech problems due to jaw misalignment, it improves the bite to avoid excessive erosion on the teeth due to an unbalanced bite, and correct facial imbalances including a retrusive lower jaw, retrusive upper jaw, or a protrusive lower jaw. So sometimes it can also help to improve breathing and symptoms related to sleep apnea. So now let's talk about the pros and cons of orthognathic surgery. So jaw surgery is a very involved operation, but there are many benefits to having it done. It improves the appearance of your profile post-surgery. It can result in improved biting, chewing, and swallowing, possible improvements of breathing and major symptoms related to sleep apnea, as well as possible improvements in speech impairments. Correction of bite problems that can't be fixed with orthodontics alone are usually best treated by surgery. So here's an example of someone who benefited from improvements of their profile through jaw surgery. So due to the extensive nature of the surgery, there are some risks and drawbacks that one should be aware of. It is generally safe when performed by an experienced oral surgeon. However, like all surgeries, there are risks involved. So some general risks of jaw surgery may include infection, nerve injury, jaw fracture, some relapse of the jaw position, problems with bite fit, or jaw joint pain. So after surgery, you will likely also have pain and swelling in the surgical areas. You'll have to stick to a diet consisting of soft foods during the initial healing period, and you'll have a brief time of adjustment to a new facial appearance as well. So additionally, the cost involved for jaw surgery can be high, especially for those without medical insurance coverage. There are many different types of jaw surgeries, but in this video, we're gonna be covering the most common types that we perform. Those include underbite jaw surgeries as well as overbite jaw surgery. If a patient has an underbite with a retrusive upper jaw, meaning that the upper jaw is too far back, but the lower jaw is well positioned, a maxillary advancement may be the best treatment option. As shown in this animation, a maxillary advancement involves moving the upper jaw forward to correct the underbite and improve the patient's profile. So once the jaw is set in its new position, it is fixed in place with titanium screws and metal plates. So if a patient has an underbite with a protrusive lower jaw, meaning that that lower jaw is too far forward, but the upper jaw is well positioned, a mandibular setback may be the best treatment option. And as shown in this animation, a mandibular setback involves moving the lower jaw back to correct the underbite and improve the patient's profile. And once the jaw is set in its place, just like before, it will be fixed in place with titanium screws and metal plates. So if a patient has a severe underbite and both a combination of a retrusive upper jaw and a protrusive lower jaw, a double jaw surgery may be needed, meaning that the surgery will be done on both the upper and lower jaws. A double jaw surgery includes moving the upper jaw forward and the lower jaw back. The technical term for this is a maxillary advancement with mandibular setback. This is best understood by watching this animation, which demonstrates the procedure. Next, we'll discuss jaw surgery that helps with overbites. If a patient has a severe overbite with a retrusive lower jaw, then a mandibular advancement may be the best treatment option. And as this animation shows, a mandibular advancement involves surgical movement of the lower jaw forward to correct the overbite and improve the profile as well. And once the jaw is in its new position, just like before, it's fixed in place with titanium screws and metal plates. Now we'll show you a few examples of patients who had jaw surgery at our practice. This first example is a patient who had a double jaw surgery due to a retrusive upper jaw and a protrusive lower jaw. This patient had her upper jaw surgically advanced and lower jaw set back. You can see the dramatic change it had on the profile and her bite. 
This next patient was similar in that she needed a double jaw surgery to move her upper jaw forward and lower jaw back. You can see her before and after photos and the dramatic improvement of her profile and bite. This last patient we'll show you as an example had just a maxillary advancement for his treatment. His lower jaw was well positioned, but he had a retrusive upper jaw. So he was treated with just a maxillary advancement. So many patients are curious about the timeline for jaw surgery and how it works. So in most cases, an orthodontist places braces on your teeth before surgery. And braces are usually on for about 12 to 18 months before surgery to level and align your teeth in preparation for that surgery. In some patients, removal of teeth and space closure may also be needed prior to having the surgery done. Your orthodontist and oral surgeon will work together to develop your treatment plan, and they'll take x-rays, pictures, and models of your teeth. And these are all part of the planning of your jaw surgery. And this will help build an expected timeline for your recovery as well. So jaw surgery is performed by an oral surgeon. This is usually done under general anesthesia in the hospital. Most jaw surgeries will require a two to four day stay in the hospital for your recovery. And during the surgical procedure, the surgeon makes cuts in the jawbone and moves them into the correct position. And once your jaw movement is completed, like we said before, tiny bone plates and screws are used to secure the bones into the correct position. The patient will be under general anesthesia during the entire process, and these screws and plates will integrate into the bone and will remain in the jaw indefinitely. So after initial jaw healing, about six weeks, your orthodontist will continue your orthodontic treatment, and it may take six to 12 months of braces treatment after your surgery to get your teeth into the final and most optimized position. So once the braces are removed, retainers will be needed to maintain the teeth and bite positions. So in total, most patients will be in braces for at least two years with about two months in the middle of the treatment to receive the jaw surgery. And one of the biggest questions patients will have regarding jaw surgery is the cost. If you have medical insurance, orthognathic surgery may be covered in some cases. This varies greatly from one insurance company to the next and some consider jaw surgery cosmetic and may not cover the treatment. So your oral surgeon will be able to advise you on whether your insurance would cover orthognathic jaw surgery. So the cost of jaw surgery when paid out of pocket in the United States and without insurance typically ranges between $20,000 to $40,000. And you may be curious if you could be treated without jaw surgery. For those patients with minor underbite and overbites, there are many treatment options involving braces or Invisalign that may not require jaw surgery. If there is a significant bite problem that is beyond the scope of orthodontics alone, then surgery may be the best option. So the subject of jaw surgery and braces usually brings up lots of questions, which is understandable. The best way to find out if jaw surgery is the correct option for you or your child is to have a consultation with an orthodontist. And if you're living in the Phoenix, Arizona area, we'd love to see you for a 100% free consultation. At this consultation appointment, we'll discuss the best treatment options available and advise whether jaw surgery may be needed. If you have any questions about jaw surgery, feel free to ask them in the comment section below and we'll do our best to answer. And if you found this information helpful, please help us out and give this video a like. Also, if you'd like to get notified when we release new braces related videos, make sure to subscribe to our channel and tap the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching. We'll talk to you soon.